shattering conventional wisdom. John Stossel. You gonna bet on the Super Bowl this weekend? Bet with your friends? I am, I've got a hundred bucks on Green Bay already. Earlier in the show, I showed video of me being arrested by a fake cop, but just for doing that. But that was just a stunt because thankfully, police rarely go after social gamblers. But rarely enforced laws are a bad thing. They tempt police to discriminate against groups they don't like. It can lead to selective tyranny. My state allows my poker game with friends, but even this game isn't legal in half the states, and playing poker on the internet's illegal everywhere in America. Casinos are illegal, except for a few places where the piles grant exceptions. Sports betting is illegal most everywhere, and the reason is to protect us. Some gamblers, it's true, do lose all their money, and focus on the family calls gaming the art of science and deception. But my next guests say, so what? Annie Duke's a professional poker player. She's won over $4 million in her career. Steve Budin sells betting advice to people who bet on sports. So, look, these politicians say they're trying to protect us, and the majority seems to be with them because they've passed the laws. You say... Well, first of all, I, I don't think that the majority is with them. Actually, about 70 million people play. There's uh, poker in some form. A lot of people play online, and there's a million people in an organization called the Poker Players Alliance that say you should make it legal. Steve? Yeah, look, um, there's no good reason to make sports gambling illegal. Um, from a social standpoint, I mean, you spend two and a half hours on the couch. The average bet uh, sports on the internet is about twenty dollars. You get two and a half hours worth of entertainment, and you work hard all week and do everything you can. And you're a good guy. And now they want to take that away from you too? Impossible. And then from an economic, well, well, some people do get into trouble. Well, I don't know. I, I've been in the gambling business for twenty years, and I can tell you that ninety-nine point nine percent of the people don't get in trouble, and that one or point one percent that does, I would argue that they would get in trouble. It's in their DNA, no matter what the scenario is, and they're using the sports gambling, not the other way around. Of people who engage in gambling behavior, point four to point seven percent of them are problem gamblers. You can compare that to something like alcohol abuse. Of the people who are engaging in drinking, seven to nine percent of those people are problems. This is a problem gambling is, it, is so small in comparison. Gambling does no direct harm to to anybody. Last time I checked, it's not the government's job to protect us from ourselves because there's a lot of McDonald's out there that I think are causing, causing you know, greater social harm than the fact that somebody goes and gambles $10 a week online, which is the average spend on an online poker room. John, you know, there's a bigger issue. Economically, I mean, the, for the Super Bowl, $100 million, I mean, $100 million is going to be spent in Vegas betting on the Super Bowl. But bigger than that, a billion dollars will be spent offshore illegally. So a billion dollars leaves the country never to come back. Half the people lose. There are 2,000 offshore betting sites Correct. now, right? Correct. So all that money, all that money leaves, dollars. never comes back. When you win, you roll it over, keep playing. When you lose, it's instantly gone. Who's making that decision? And are they making all the economic decisions? Yeah, the yeah. politicians. Yeah, well. Pretty much. In, in, in the case of uh, internet poker, uh, the studies that we have say that if you were to legalize it and tax it and regulate it, which would actually offer consumer protection, it would keep minors offline, that it would generate between 10 and $42 billion in tax revenue over the next 10 years, depending on which study you see. And there's actually a bill that McDermott, McDermott has introduced that would allow us to tax online poker. It just hasn't gotten up in, uh, you know, for a vote yet. So you say consenting adults ought to be able sure. to play, but so then you, I assume, from that would support legalization of marijuana and prostitution. Yes. But Steve no, I, says no. No. Well, marijuana possibly. I think it's a light drug. I wouldn't right, support. Prostitution. No, definitely not. Um, Why? What's the difference between poker and prostitution? Well, one is human trafficking and, you know, one but is entertainment. consenting adults. But, it wouldn't, yeah, but be, it wouldn't be human trafficking if it were legal. Oh, yes, it and would. And I think that's and one of the issues. Look, um, uh, making gambling illegal, uh, legal in Vegas doesn't stop illegal bookmakers from thriving in Vegas. Um, nor would legal prostitution do anything but promote prostitution. You'd find more of it, not well, less of it. legal poker would promote poker. Right, and poker's a, a, a valuable form of entertainment and a viable form of entertainment, and well, it should be promoted. Sex workers say prostitution's just a form of entertainment. And I disagree. Do you, do you think that strip clubs should be legal? 
Um, you know, legal, yeah, yes. You know, but prostitution, but no. what's the difference? Why are you drawing the line? It's about consenting adults engaging in consenting behavior. Because when, you know, when you sell your body for sex, I think that puts you in a different category than when you bet on a game or when you play poker. Yeah, I'm Everyone's sure always trying to lump gambling in with prostitution and drugs, and it's, it's ridiculous. Well, it shouldn't. That's true. It, it's a completely different beast, but I think that... Well, it's a similar beast. It's consenting adults. That's right. It's consenting adults where there's no direct harm. It, One's entertainment in the, in the, with no victim. One's Got, got, got a victim. Well, so it depends in, in the case of prostitution whether you consider it there to be a victim. So that, that's a matter definitely, of, not, not, of opinion. What about the hypocrisy of the states that say you can't gamble but play our lottery? Well, I mean, I think that that's one of the most ridiculous things. Why is lottery legal? Lottery is one of the most regressive forms of gambling there is. Rich people Regress don't, regressive. Rich people don't play the lottery. Poor people do. So and the state cut is higher than the casino game. That's correct. So Almost basically 50%. what you're doing is adding an extra tax on, on the poor segment of the population to pay for education. And yet they say that, you know, playing poker is not it She's right. Be legal. She's right. Slot machines, video poker, it's the crack cocaine of the gambling industry. Risk, risk, risk every second. Sports betting, two and a half hours worth of one risk. You know, because it was up to casinos, they'd throw the sports books out. That's true. It's better floor space for slot machines. Absolutely. That's true. Well, I thank you both, Annie Duke, Steve Budin. Next, what would happen if I tried to invent a sport today? What would the busybodies do?